Welcome to the uh, podcast, Kentucky Fathers. I'm your host. Just want to talk to you very briefly today about a book that was extremely, that has been extremely helpful to me, very impactful, um, outstanding book. It was really published back in, oh my Lord, this book goes back to 1995. It's copyrighted by the Institute for American Values. Um, it's a good book. Um, it's a good book. Still very, still very relevant today. And what is this? I'm I'm in June. This is June of 2022, and I'm I'm telling you that this book is still relevant today. The full title is "Fatherless America: Confronting Our Most Urgent Social Problem" by David Blankenhorn. If you cannot get this book at Amazon.com, I strongly suggest you go to Better World Books or you go to. Uh, I forget. Oh, Thrift Books. Those are two places where you can buy books, use books online. Uh, this is a book. If you're a father who's really serious about being the best father you can be, being a better father today than what you were yesterday, buy this book. You want this book. Fatherless America Confronting Our Most Urgent Social Problem by David Blankenhorn. Um, I've read it uh, several years ago and I refer to it here and there. And it is still relevant today. If you're a father who's experiencing parental alienation, uh, one of the best books you can get to help you deal with that and help you understand that is Taken into Custody, The War Against Fathers, Marriage and the Family by Stephen Baskerville, B-A-S-K-E-R-V-I-L-L-E. And again, if you cannot get it at Amazon.com, you want to go to Better World Books or um thrift books it's it's a good one too um, gives you some good pointers good information I'm probably going to reread this book well particular chapters I'm, I'm going to reread um, particularly here where it says judicial kidnapping let's name one of the chapters uh, fathers and feminine feminism politics of fatherhood um, it's it's real important that you read this Guys, you got to understand something. When if if you're in a marriage, you have children, and then you later divorce, uh, there's a high high possibility you're going to exp- experience parental alienation, and uh, there's a high high possibility that the court system is going to is going to support that. Sometimes out of ignorance, other times just malice, and or a combination of the two. And you just have to be, you have to be ready to deal with it. You're going to need an attorney. Don't go into that family court system pro se. That's the mistake I made. Good buddy of mine told me not to do it. I did it anyway, and um, boy, I, I, I got slaughtered. And um, some of the things that, the dirty tricks my ex-wife's uh, attorney did. I mean, it was just, I, just, I just couldn't believe he did it, but he did it. And he got away with it. So, you know, what can I say? Um, but I, I, was, I was ignorant. I, shouldn't have, uh, I should have listened to my friend's advice and not going to family court pro se. So let me tell you guys something. Let me tell you something. They don't care. Uh, their, their standard, their ethical standards, I mean, it's, they don't care. Um. They just don't care. And their hostility towards fathers is just, is utterly amazing. I know some people are, are saying, oh, you're just speaking out of bitterness. No, I'm speaking out of personal experience. So never go into family court pro se. Get an attorney. Here's a second bit of advice I want to give you too. Stay away from your ex-wife as much as possible. During the course of the divorce, stay away. Because what she'll do is she'll try to, um, and many times, I had an attorney say to me, this is what attorneys encourage uh, wives to do, ex-wives to do, to get in a conflict with you, then to call the police on you and say, oh, he did something threatening to me, and then go down to the courthouse and get an EPO on you. As soon as you get that EPO on you, um, and many times the judge will put an EPO on you. You don't have to hit anybody. 
You don't have to have hit that woman. You don't have to have threatened her to hit her. Only thing she has to say is that I fear for my life. I mean, literally. And they get that e- and they put that EPO on you. And then a public defender cannot or will not take your case. They can't take your case. They cannot take your case. So now you have to go pay for an attorney. And so uh, I actually had an attorney tell me, a female attorney, a black female attorney tell me, oh, yeah, uh, attorneys, uh, we'll, tell, we'll tell a client to go do that. And I'm like, wow. So, uh, I mean, think about it. The, <laughs> if your ex-wife has an attorney, she's paying the attorney, but you have a public defender, you're not paying him or her. Even though they may not be able to, that public defender may not be able to put as much time and effort into your case, he's, he's still free, right? So you can stay in there, battle for joint custody of your child, and it's not really hurting you financially, except for the time that you're spending away from work. But once she's able to sort of do some, I don't want to say trickery, but get an EPO on you, and that's it. Public defender, they cannot step up. They cannot take your case. Um, so it's it's dirty tricks, but, uh, you know, I've had attorneys. Well, actually, I'm thinking about it. I had two, three attorneys tell me, oh, this that's what your ex-wife did. And I kept saying, but I didn't hit her. I didn't threaten her. I didn't destroy her property. It doesn't matter. That judge will, more often than not, side on the, what they could, you know, he'll, he'll be cautious. And uh, he'll just say, well, we'll do an EPO. We're going to do one anyway. And uh, it doesn't really prevent you from seeing your child. They just put some restrictions on there. You know, that's, that's okay, but she does have that. She does gain that advantage in court over you. And, uh, boy, it's, it's, it's something that's frustrating. But let me, let me also say this. Again, uh, the, book, the name of the book is called Taken Into Custody. The War Against Father's Marriage in in the Family. Let me say this too. As an alienated parent, never give up on your child. Never give up on your child. Do not waste your time and effort trying to um, talk to your ex-wife, reason with her, anything of that nature. Don't do it. You have to think about this. Anytime a, a woman, a parent, a mother would try to actively keep you from your child and your child away from you, that's not a very reasonable person. That's a person who's got some emotional issues. they got some emotional issues to deal with. They have to deal with those emotional issues on their terms and on their schedule. You can't, you can't tell them, hey, you know, you got emotional issues, you need to deal with it right now. No, they're, they're not going to hear that. They're just not going to hear that. You just have to... You know, like, you remember in Hamlet, <laughs> Hamlet's father came to him and said, look, it's your uncle that poisoned me, And but as far as your mother's concerned, leave her to God. I want, you know, leave her to God. And that's, what you, that's the attitude you have to take to your ex-wife, the alienating parent. Leave her to God. Your focus has to be on your child. And you have to do everything you can do within reason. Uh, to stay in your stay in contact with your child, stay involved with her, uh, his or hers life, schooling, the whole bit. Um, I mean, you just you just have to do that. Don't listen to anyone who says to you, "Oh, don't reach out to your child." Don't do that. Now, I've had family members uh, say that to me. I ignore them. I, I just I did a lot of reading. I did a lot of research. There's a guy on YouTube called Ryan Thomas. Um, he's really good on uh, explaining to people about parental alienation, how to deal with it. And every last individual I, I read about, I researched when it came to when it came to parental alienation, said this: you never give up on your child, and anyone who tells you to do so, you ignore them. You ignore them. If they want to tell you, they come up with some crazy theory about why your child's not speaking to you, you ignore them. Your, your priority is your child. And here's another thing. Never, never, never um, 
make disparaging remarks about your ex-wife, about your child's mother. Never do it. I don't care what your ex has said about you. I don't care what she's done to you. I don't care. Um, I, I, I I stopped going into detail telling people about, oh, woe was me. This is what my ex-wife did to me. Man, give that up. It's over. It's done. Move forward. Um, you have to forgive your spouse. You have to forgive her. And you have to act in a forgiving manner. And it's you're not acting in a forgiving manner if you make disparaging remarks to your child about your about the alienating parent. The parent is trying to keep you from your child. Don't do it. Always say to your your child, "Hey, respect and love um, your mama." If if she's the one who's doing the alienation, just say that, and just leave it at that. Well, daddy, she you know, mama said this. Oh, did she? Okay. Well, tell you what. When you're older, we'll talk about that. In the meantime, I expect you to obey your mother, respect your mother, love your mother, and hey, you know, when are we going to get together again? What are some? When are we going to have some time to talk about your dreams and goals? You know, um, even though I'm your parent, it does not justify you disrespecting me. Things like that. But you, you don't get into oh, your mama did this, your mama did. Leave that alone. Leave that alone. Pray for the woman. And I and I and I keep saying pray for the woman, things like that. Pray for your mama, because the overwhelming majority of parental alienators, who people who engage in that emotional child abuse, are mothers. Uh, they want to alienate the child uh, from the father. But uh, you know that's that's another story. But I just want to put those tips out there and urge you to to get that book. Stay tuned. Please share. Um, Please share my podcast with other fathers. Sign up. Um, if you have questions of me, please you know direct them to me. Uh, I love to answer them. I can really only talk about my experience, and hopefully in talking about my experience, you'll learn something, you'll gain something, you'll benefit in some fashion, form, or another.